Frequent Miler on the Air starts now. Today's main event, Air Canada is added as a Chase Ultimate Rewards transfer partner. Is that great news? Mm. <laughs> we'll see. Mm. <laughs> we'll find Nick out and I soon. are rubbing our chins. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but first, let's get into the giant mailbag. Today's mail comes from Tony. Tony had a comment on my post, actually, about this topic. I wrote about how uh, Chase and uh, Chase has <laughs> added Air Canada as a transfer partner, and I compared the award rates of United uh, versus Air Canada booking the same Star Alliance awards. And what Tony wrote was, with dynamic award pricing these days, comparison solely based on Saver awards is no longer appropriate. Both of these airlines seem to purposely price most of their award tickets at prices just above the saver levels, making these redemptions unavailable to their partners. Okay, so I, I, I mentioned this particular comment, not so much because of how it reflects on my post, but because my post was more about uh, third-party partner awards booking, you know, ANA and, and Turkish and other, other uh, airlines. But I do want to point out that I think Tony's right, at least with United. I've, when I've been doing award searches lately, one yeah. of the things I've noticed is that, you know, United domestically charges 25K um, one way for a business class award or first class, domestic first class. Right. Um, but for a saver I, award, theoretically. For the saver award, <laughs> if a saver award's available. That's what you mean by theoretic, right? It, well, I mean, so it, well, I also mean that there's so many different, I mean, they don't call them web specials, but there's so many routes that price differently too. But, oh, but yes, okay. that's- Well, in that's economy, the, I, I don't, do, yeah, in economy, maybe not in business. Yeah, yeah. I haven't even looked in, in, in business. In business, business it seems anything. to be fixed at the 25K, okay. but at least for now. But, yeah, that could be. but what I did see is exactly what Tony says, which is, tons of routes where there was no saver award availability, meaning in business class, meaning other, their partners can't book those flights. Only United can book them, but United priced all of them. Like almost every single flight I looked at 25,500 miles. Ridiculous. <laughs> Ridiculous. That's yeah. crazy. That's it's, crazy. You know, it, it's, and it's true. You, you can't really book. I've even, even looking for economy flights, I've had a lot of difficulty finding any economy class availability with partner miles for United domestic economy flights. Like, uh, you know, really? there's obviously okay. there's some, but yeah, but I've been looking for some huh. of the routes that we're, uh, we'll talk about in Southwest in a little bit. And man, I just like yeah. days and days with nothing at interesting. all. That, that's very interesting because, because the, in the work I did for this post, I had no trouble at all in huh. finding economy. Award that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, I was maybe picking, depends on the routes. I was picking a random yeah. uh, date for pretty far in the future just to, uh, yeah try to ensure that there'd be availability. But, but, but totally right. I mean, it, 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 if you, if your primary goal is to fly United and you're right, I mean, these partner star Alliance awards probably aren't going to be your bag, right. but to be honest with you, I think in a lot of cases, miles aren't necessarily the bag for you then either. Maybe cash back makes more sense because, yep. you, you know, if you're going to pay the 50,000 that United wants to charge on, you know, for an anytime award, for a one-way business class award, yeah, you probably would do better just getting a good cash back card and buying those tickets and earning miles and elite credit and blah, blah, blah. So uh, if those are the yeah. types of awards you want, then the miles game probably isn't right uh, for that purpose. But you know, like Greg was really pointing out there is I want to use United and Air Canada miles to fly lots of other airlines. I want to fly Lufthansa and Swiss and ANA and Turkish. And, and so I, that's how I look at using those miles. And that's the lens you were obviously looking at it through, right? That's right. That, exactly. Exactly. And of course, I can't, I can't let this go by though, that, you know, we, you said, if you want to fly United, then you should be looking at United <laughs> miles, but, or at cash, but, but right. obviously, as we've talked about before, there are situations where sure. United releases save reward space and there are incredible deals by booking with partner miles. But and, and that's why I'm searching every single day for the few <laughs> routes that I need, because if I do find one of those, great. I mean, I'd love right, to right. be able to book and, it for not very many miles. So yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm going to talk yeah. about one of those later when we get into the main event. Okay, good. All I'm right. looking forward to it. a little sneak preview there. All right. So then 
Let's look at Mattress Running the Numbers. So this week for Mattress Running the Numbers, we've got something from Hilton, right? There's some stacking Hilton opportunities. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is interesting. So there's an Amex offer out that basically saves you 20%, up to 20% on a Hilton stay because the way it's the way it works is you get, um, you know, if you spend $250, you get back... I don't know, whatever 20% of that is. And 50 bucks, 50 bucks. <laughs> 50 bucks. And there's a, there's a couple of variations on it at different Hilton properties, but they all work out to, if you maximize it exactly, it's a 20% rebate. Okay. And uh, the other thing is Steven found and posted that there's a link that lets you add these offers to your Hilton Aspire card. So most of these offers don't necessarily show up automatically if you have the top tier Hilton Aspire credit card, but it's pretty exciting if you get an offer like this on there, right? Because Hilton Aspire offers 14 points per dollar at Hilton Properties, you know, so you get both that plus the Amex rebate, plus if you still have your resort credit and you, and you stay at a resort property, you're getting up to $250 back a year with the Hilton Aspire card. So, so that combination is pretty awesome. And then all of the stacks, if you had enrolled in your Hilton uh, double or triple points promo, that's, that's still going on through, I think, September 5th or so, then it, as long as you book a three night stay or more, you get triple points, less than that, you get double points. And um, so you could get up to 54 points per dollar that's if you have the Aspire card, and that's partly because you have diamond status, and so that gets you bonus points. You're paying with the Aspire card, getting the 14 points per dollar, and now you're getting this like triple points promo. So all these things stack up to 54 points per dollar, which is pretty spectacular. So points, the, yeah. yeah, right. So the question on the table is: Is all of this together mattress run worthy? Well, you know, when you first started talking about this, when we first looked at this, I was like. Oh yeah, that that actually sounds pretty interesting. Now, I have a question to propose maybe at the end. Uh, well, you know, maybe I should propose it now because it'll explain why I'm going to do the math the way I am. Do you know? Because I don't know the answer to this. <laughs> if you have, let's say, you have that Amex offer for fifty back on two fifty, and you spend exactly two fifty at a Hilton Resort, will you get three hundred dollars back? Will you get your two hundred and fifty dollar Aspire credit? plus the $50 Amex offer. Now, yeah, the answer is yes, you would because it triggers the Amex offer. But the reason I'm asking is because in the past with Dell, Amex hasn't liked it when you came out profitable and has clawed back on people. Right. Now, in my case, I have stacked those two things, but never on a stay that was that cheap. It was always on stays that were more expensive and you know, just gotcha. save some money. So yep. I don't know if Amex will claw back if you try to come out 50 bucks ahead on that. So what I'm going to do for the purposes of the math is assume that you book a $300 stay okay. at a Hilton resort. Okay. So you book sure. a $300 stay, you get 50 bucks back from the Amex offer, 250 back if you've got the Hilton Aspire resort credit. Worth noting that you need to go and look at the Hilton resorts. There's a resorts page. If you go to our, our Aspire card page, you'll find a link to it somewhere. And, and you want to check because not every place that's called a resort is a resort, and not every place that is a resort says that it's a resort or, or intuitively seems like a resort. So that's worth mentioning. Anyway, so you book a $300 stay at one of those places, get your $300 back. And if you're getting 54 points per dollar, then you end up with 16,200 Hilton points. And for a minute, I was like, you know, if you're not planning to use your Aspire credit this year, you can effectively turn that credit into 16,200 points that you can use later, stack into a more valuable redemption, et cetera, et cetera. So I was going to say, well, yeah, if you're not going to use it, why not turn it into some points? Except that I did the math and I was like, okay, well, 16,200 points, that's worth like $81. So trading your 200 And that's if you're very credit, generously calling them half a cent each. Half a cent, right, right. And Whereas we, we really our value current, you know what? Right, our tenths. current RRV is, is 0.4. So yeah, four tenths of a cent. Yeah. So even less, even less, right, 65, 70-ish, right. somewhere in there uh, at, at the four tenths, right? So not, not that much. It's right. not worth that much. So you're trading in $250 worth of credit for very little in points. And so that made me less excited when I actually thought about it, because as I've pointed out before, you can use that resort credit this year if you book a resort for some time next year that requires a deposit. Yeah. Not yeah. all hotels that require a deposit 
are non-refundable. Some will charge a deposit or even you may book a, a hotel that doesn't have a deposit. You may be able to reach out and ask them if they will take a deposit from you. And, and of course, if they do that, they will give it back if you later have to cancel your stay. Uh, but so even if you're not planning a stay this year, you can look way out into the future, book a stay way out for next year and try to get a full $250 in value out of that. I wouldn't trade it for $81 worth of points, would you? Oh, no, no, I wouldn't. Um, but but let's talk about how good this is as a, as a rebate and how it's not as completely impractical as it sounds if you're in two-player mode. So if you and your, your significant other both have the Aspire card, um, then you, you could book a single three-night stay and at checkout, you know, divide the, the uh, spend across the two. And I'm bringing that up because... Remember, to get the full 40, 54 points per dollar needs to be a three-night stay at a resort that triggers the credit. So we're, <laughs> so we're talking right. about <laughs> you know, trying to get a three-night stay for $300 after taxes is kind of silly, especially in, to, you know, these days. Right. Uh, right. And so you know, getting, a, getting one for $600 is probably also pretty unlikely, but at least it's towards More the realm likely. of theoretically possible right. and and then particularly you could, if you're traveling overseas if you're if you're if you are traveling overseas this year i i'm finding more i look at stuff that there are some pr really reasonable prices overseas like i was looking at a rental car in the u.s and i was looking at like a hundred dollars a day for a, like a, an intermediate car if i wanted a minivan it's gonna be like yeah. two hundred dollars a day right right and and i i or closer to that anyway and then i was looking at one overseas and I was looking at like twenty dollars a day. <laughs> <I was laughs> right, like, right, wow, right, right. It's amazing. So, yeah. and the same kind of thing is happening in some cases with hotels. So you might, if you might be able to book a resort overseas somewhere oh, for sure. a reasonable price. Yeah, so, and uh, actually, probably in Mexico, there's probably probably uh, plenty of availability for that type of uh, rate. Uh, and uh, so, if you look at it, even without the Aspire credit, if you could do this, you're looking at twenty percent back from the Amex offer plus depending on how you value the, the Hilton points, 22% um, at our, at our valuation or 27% back at a half cent per point value. So let's just call that 25% to be in between the two. And so we're looking at about a 45% rebate on that kind of stay. And then plus you get to use your, you know, some amount of your uh, credits if you haven't already. So it's a pretty, pretty nice uh, deal. But yeah, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't see it as mattress unworthy, but a way to get a really nice rebate on a, uh, on a resort stay. For sure. Yeah. A very nice rebate. So it's totally worth it if you are looking to stay at a resort and, and one that, you know, fits the price point, your needs matches here, then yeah, I mean, of course, it's a great rebate, you know, nice to walk out with all those points and, and money in your pocket. So for sure. worth looking at, not worth booking if you don't have any need for this day. Right, exactly. <laughs> okay, so then what crazy thing did Southwest Airlines do this week? Oh, man, yeah. you're, you're all, oh, man. all you're all over this since you're the one oh. who it happened to, but not the right. only one, are you? <laughs> oh, no, I'm far from the only one. So if you're listening to this and you have any reservations on Southwest Airlines, don't skip ahead to the next section yet. If you don't know what we're talking about, don't don't hear me say schedule change and be like, oh, yeah, I got that email and skip ahead. You don't want to make that mistake. So Southwest is doing some crazy, crazy, crazy schedule changes, but it's not just the fact that they're changing schedules. So what happened to me, what kind of kicked this off is that I had a flight booked from Albany to Seattle connecting in Chicago. So Albany, Chicago, Chicago, Seattle for this fall. And I was in my account changing some other reservations. And I saw that in my Southwest.com account, that trip was now originating in Chicago. It was only Chicago to Seattle. And I was like, but wait, I fly out of Albany. <laughs> like, <laughs> how is that? Did I make a mistake? And so I went back to my email because I know I've gotten a bunch of schedule change emails and I've kind of ignored them because those flights are far out in the future and I don't know what, you know, what I'm going to do sure, yet. Sure. So I kind of ignored them. So I looked back at the schedule change email and I was like, okay, the schedule change that Southwest sent me about this itinerary, 
The only change, and they highlight them in red so you can see exactly what's changed. The only change on, on, on in the email that they sent me was that the, the flight to Seattle was going to arrive 10 minutes later and change the flight number. So the schedule change email that I have still shows me flying Albany to Chicago to Seattle. But when I go to Southwest.com and pull up that confirmation, the Albany to Chicago leg is just gone, disappeared. Like I never booked it. It's not there. Like I would have shown up on my computer, so to speak, to check in 24 hours in advance or truthfully, I may not have even done that because I have kids. So we get to board right behind the A group. So I don't really care what boarding pass I get. So I may have waited until I got there to check in <laughs> and found that I didn't have a flight from Albany to Chicago. Well, like, wait a minute. Let, let me just ask you something. Is it possible okay. that just what you're seeing online is the is the wrong thing and what you got in the email was right? I mean, is it possible? I would say it sounds possible, except lots of people commented to say that they had to call and get that fixed, that they called Southwest and Southwest was like, oh, wow, I don't know how this happened and help them fix their their itineraries. And then like one person said they had a flight from Honolulu back to the mainland where the Honolulu to the mainland leg was just mysteriously dropped off of the itinerary. <laughs> they said, do they expect me to f- swim back from Hawaii? I mean, and, and I, I laughed and I said, you know, I'm laughing about this, but I bet you I'm depressed departure day at the airport, there will be some people that are not laughing because they'll have paid for early bird check-in or whatever and show up at the airport. And all of a sudden their first leg is just not there anymore. And and the, the crazy thing is that in, in my case, it does look like they canceled my original Albany to Chicago flight. That flight isn't there anymore, but rather than rebooking us on the one that is still there, they just eliminated that altogether. But then when I looked at other schedule changes in my email, I found in other situations Again, they just dropped entire legs. I have a flight booked from Albany to Baltimore to Myrtle Beach with Myrtle Beach as my destination. Yeah. And then back two separate one ways. And in both cases, the flight between Baltimore and Myrtle Beach is just gone. Like it's just off my itinerary online. And, and, you know, I called a family member that's flying to Seattle with me. And I said, hey, you know, they've changed this. We're going to have to get this fixed. And she said, no, I got to schedule a change email. It still leaves out of Albany. She's like, my flight leaves out of Albany. And I was like, no. I don't think it does. <laughs> Look it up <laughs> online and on southwest.com. She's like, no, it leaves from Albany. And she video chats me and shows me her screen triumphantly. No, look at this email. It says I'm flying from Albany. And I yeah. said, yeah, I know. Yeah. Go to southwest.com. And she did. And she was like, oh, yeah. Wow. How would I know that? Who would know? Who would know Southwest? So, and this has happened to a lot of people. When you look at the comments on the post, lots and lots of people are having this where they had flights, uh, you know, where legs are just gone or nonstops were changed to three stops, even though there's still a nonstop, you know, between their, their origin and destination. So if you've gotten a schedule change email from Southwest, don't believe what's in the email, go to Southwest.com, look at the itinerary. And then kick back and relax and get ready to wait on hold for two hours because you're gonna have to call and get it sorted oh, out. Is it uh, is it long hold? I, that's what that's what people are that's saying. What people yeah. Are saying, oh boy. And, and 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 this might not be as big of an issue if your original itinerary is still available and it hasn't changed so much that that Southwest is going to give you like the free change thing that they do because you know how they do that these days where you know if there's been a significant change sometimes you can change to any other flight for free between those yeah. two cities. But the problem with that work. is that yep. like my Chicago to Seattle flight, I could only change to another Chicago to Seattle flight online. I can't change that to Albany anymore. Uh, But with flights that haven't had a significant schedule change, you might be able to just fix it yourself online. You know what I think about this? I I, I think that Nick, you're you're just a big complainer. Your Southwest (laughs) has proactively changed you from a one-stop itinerary to a non-stop itinerary and you're complaining about it. Right, right. (laughs) <laughs> right. They did. They changed me to the nonstop. Right. All I got to do is just drive, drive to myself, Chicago. Come you know, on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 14 hours or whatever it is to Chicago from here. That's all I got to do. That's all I got to do. That's all you got to yeah. do. So, uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for that, Southwest. So I actually haven't even gotten that sorted out yet. I saw lots of readers did, but I haven't actually fixed it uh, for mine yet. So that's uh, an adventure that I'm looking forward to. But yeah, crazy, are, crazy, are, crazy. Are, are, did you not do it yet because you're on vacation this week? And so you're like, nah. I'll do it during <laughs> during frequent miler time when I'm back on the clock. Right, right, exactly. That's my plan. I, darn it, discovered. <laughs>
discovered. <laughs> no. I understand no, I, your <laughs> devious teeth. But actually, I mean, actually, that this kind of stuff is related to your job and, and always gets uh, source material like what happened just here. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> My wife is asking me, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm just sending a quick email to Greg and Steven. She's like, are you working on that list that I gave you of things that have to get done? And I was like, I, I'm, I'm getting there. Hang on. Just two seconds here. I, I know I'm on vacation, but this is too interesting. Not so to you, tell your vacation about, right? is, is, is about doing your honeydew list. Is that the, <laughs> it, uh, it is. That, it that, is. That's it the is. deal. It, oh, like it's literally printed out. <laughs> I got a printout this week of stuff to do. So, so I'm working my way through. And one of the things on that printout was not change the flights. Uh, but now of course it is. So <laughs> I added that one. So, so we'll get there. All right. That's All right. the crazy thing. So then that brings us to the main, main event. event. Welcome to the main event. Yeah. Main event. time. So Chase added Air Canada as a transfer partner. And when they did so, I proudly declared that Air Canada's award prices are often better than United's, uh, which is another transfer partner from Chase. Uh, mm -hmm. And I said, especially on long haul uh, premium cabin routes. So then... <laughs> they were they were often better than, than, than united for a long so, time so then yes yeah, so they, they used to be um uh, so then i i did some comparison to see was that thing i published uh, correct <laughs> <laughs> sometimes i should do that in advance but in this case i didn't and you know the the answer was was kind of mixed so so first of all that statement did say premium cabin um, so let me first address economy awards. I, what, I, I didn't, even though I didn't say you to, you should expect economy awards to be cheaper with Air Canada, I didn't expect them to be significantly worse than United, but in almost every route I checked, United had better award pricing in economy than Air Canada. Now, when it's important to say every route I checked, because I, it's not like I checked all possible routes or anything. I just, I grabbed a handful of both uh, domestic and international routes and, and looked at them. You know, I, I tried to pick sort of popular destinations and um, but yeah, United both on domestic and international routes economy was just better, cheaper. Um, so, so there you go. And you no that. doubt went back to the original post and sent a little update in there, right. To say, Actually, maybe not off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I can't remember if I've updated that or not. I don't think you did. But oh boy, I need to get back there. Hold that for the post this time. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so now let's look at at business class. I didn't actually look at at many first class awards within domestic U.S. because they're so hard to find uh, where there's saver availability. Where so you can where you can book United first class with Air Canada. The one, the one where I did find was a very short route and Air Canada was cheaper, but that's to be expected because Air Canada has, has a, a kind of hybrid uh, distance-based award chart. So that wasn't a surprise. On longer routes, it probably wouldn't be cheaper. Uh, internationally, though, I did expect to see Air Canada cheaper and it was sometimes, but just as often, if not more often, United was cheaper for business class international routes. And the difference tended to be more significant when United was cheaper than when Air Canada was cheaper. So, so in all of those cases I looked at, I wouldn't feel that bad using United miles instead of Air Canada miles because it was only like 10,000 you know, points-ish more, whereas Air Canada was some, often 20,000 points more than United, as an example. Okay. And mm -hmm. then, then we looked at, first class international awards there it's it's very clear at least <laughs> i only i only found and published two but but those two were were very clear air canada is better at that top level they they have a better award chart at that top first class uh level than united who doesn't have a award chart but how they price awards for first class international is very high which which we already knew but mm -hmm. um but but there you go so so yeah, what you know, my statement was it, it was not, I guess, completely incorrect when I said you'll often find better pricing, but it suggested it depends on what you're searching for. <laughs> yeah, it, it suggested I think that it was more likely than than 
is true in fact. Well, okay. And I will give you that, that, that perhaps the choice of words or the situations that d- different people will find themselves in, it certainly may not be the case that Air Canada is priced better. But even with that said, there's I have a couple of feelings here. So first of all, when it comes to domestic economy class redemptions, United should have the best price on anything where they've got their weird variable pricing and it's less than 7,500 miles each way. And then anywhere where Air Canada can book it, I mean, let's be real. I could book that with Turkish miles, hopefully, if it works, for 7,500 <laughs> miles one way in economy or 12.5 one way in business. So I don't really care about Air Canada's pricing on domestic flights because I got Turkish so and, and I got uh, uh, life miles. So those right. are options that are better. Now, of course, Chase doesn't have those options. No. So, uh, so it's not improving anything for Chase uh, with that, but that doesn't mean it's bad news. I mean, uh, that's not the strength of using Air Canada miles. So yeah, you're not going to get a better deal on economy, but that's not, uh, you're not going to get a better deal than Turkish uh, for domestic economy anyway. So, so uh, you know, unless United happens to have, again, those 5,000 mile flights or whatever. Right. Which they, which they do sometimes. Yeah. Which they do sometimes. Yeah. All right. So is it good news though? Overall, is it good news? Now, personally, I don't have a big problem with the fact that they don't always have better pricing than United. I found it interesting a moment ago that you said that if United costs 10,000 miles more, you don't feel that bad booking it through United. I mean, if United added $150 worth of fuel surcharges, would you then want to book through United or through Air Canada? I mean, of course, you book through Air Canada and not pay the fuel surcharges, right? So you don't want to pay 10,000 miles more. And the good news is you don't have to because they're both Chase partners. So you wouldn't pay 10,000 miles more and book it via United. You transfer to Air Canada instead. That's the value of having multiple transfer partners that you can pick the one that's best in each situation. So while Air Canada might not be better than United in all situations, they're better in at least some. They are. Uh, before we dig into it and at least some so that adds value to the chase oh it, it absolutely does sure. and there's no question about that it, but it but it goes from that investigation led me from sort of a excitement of like oh ultimate rewards chase ultimate rewards points are worth you know a lot more than before because now finally there's a good transfer partner for booking international business and first class awards and uh, after doing that research, the excitement about that, you know, came down quite All right. So, so, so let me pump you back up then. So when we talked about uh, pr- transfer pro- programs a few weeks ago on this show, we talked about how uh, kind of simplifying things. We said Chase is really basically the best program for beginners who want to have easy ways to use points. And we said that Amex is better for people who are more intermediate or advanced because their transfer partners tend to involve uh, more, more complication, but also sweet spots for those looking for complicated stuff. And I think that this edition of Aeroplan adds a bit of that complex element that makes Chase Ultimate Rewards points more interesting to me. Because, you know, when you talk about routes where Air Canada was 10 or 20,000 miles more than United, 20,000, I think you said, the thing to keep in mind there is for anybody who's interested in complex itineraries, that means that for another 5,000, for 25,000 on top, you could see two destinations. And in some of these regions, that's a really wide, wide range of places. So you left out the Pacific region altogether when you were making those comparisons. And the Pacific region is really where it's at. If you've got any interest in traveling to either Asia or Australia or both, then the Air Canada chart is really interesting because they charge at the top end, at the the longest itineraries, 105,000 miles one way in business class to Australia or or anywhere else in that whole Asia region. And they have so many partners that fly to Asia where you can get yourself a 5,000 mile stopover. So for 110,000 miles in business class, you could visit two places. You could fly EVA and visit Taipei plus somewhere else in Asia, or you could fly ANA and visit Tokyo plus somewhere else in Asia or Australia, by the way, continue on to Australia, right? Or New Zealand or whatever it might be, or you could fly Air New Zealand if you actually found award space and stop in Auckland and then continue on or Asiana and go to Seoul yeah, and continue. Yeah. I mean, and there, so we could continue with this list, but the key is there are lots and lots of partners that travel to, to, to Asia and the Pacific. So if you have any interest in that area, even though Air Canada probably does charge more than United for a very simple one-way 
uh, business class itinerary. If you're looking for anything complex, this makes Ultimate Rewards much better. Not better than an ANA around the world or, or some of the ANA sweet spots out there, but much better than what Ultimate Rewards offered before. Yeah, yeah. And uh, let me go back to domestic flights. Um, yeah, it, this is, I'm now going to talk about Hawaii. Okay. So, <laughs> Tell me, One of the things, I, I like hearing about Hawaii. Talk right. to me about Hawaii. So we've talked about how United awards business class awards to Hawaii or first class awards to Hawaii are almost impossible to find. However, I found that on the day of the flight, they are very often available. Mm. And so just this morning, <laughs> what I did is I, I logged into United to, to check whether uh, Denver to the big Island, uh, nonstop flight was available in business class. And there were something like four or five seats available in first now, class. Now, okay. I, b- because some people who are listening with an eagle ear, so to speak, I guess that's the equivalent of an eagle eye might've caught something you just said. And I think you maybe misspoke. Did you log in at United or you just went to United? I just Did went to United. In? I okay, didn't log yeah, in. You said you logged in to United and I was thinking, Ooh, if you log in, you might see space that's not available to partners, right? That's so. true. That's true in economy. I don't think it's true in business true class, in business? But, okay. but either that way, I, did, I didn't log in. Okay, good. Okay. Just wanted to clarify so, that for anybody who thought you but were the seeing next, something. The next step will available. will uh, put your Uh-oh. mind at ease anyway. Uh, okay. So once I, once I saw that, I went over to Air Canada, did the same search, and what I, and I did find the same availability. And what I found is United, who charges more on flights that are uh, within, what is it, 21 days, um, mm-hmm. they wanted something like 52,700, some weird weird number of miles f- per person for this one-way uh, first-class flight. Air Canada wanted 35,000. And so, yeah, the, the uh, taxes are a little bit more, like 30 bucks more, but you know, obviously it's worth it to save that many miles. And, um, that is really cool because, uh, you know, one, if, if you have chase points, you can, you can do it Two, If you have, uh, the ability to transfer to Turkish where, where Turkish would only charge 12,500 miles. And I verified that by looking online and Turkish is showing that 12,500 for these flights. Then, um, the problem is transfers to Turkish are Our nowhere instant. near instant. Yeah. No, so you no. can't fly you same day yeah. if you wanted to. No, no, <laughs> no and, and you can't, and you can't book it online right now. As far as I know, there's been no change. There's no button to pay. So you'd have to <laughs> right. call and that's, hope that a phone slip. agent. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you, good luck you with can't that. do that. No, that, that, that's not going to work out. That's not going to work out. You need to be <laughs> right, able to right, book right. it a little farther in advance. Right. Right. Uh, so, so anyway, the, the point is, you know, here's, here's like a, a sort of sweet spot for Chase uh, customers, Chase Ultimate Rewards people who, <laughs> if you're who have the flexibility for, to take off to Hawaii, you have the today. flexibility <laughs> to take off, you know, last minute, right. uh, or come back last minute. And uh, I'm, I mean, I'm seriously thinking about that for the future. We're, we're doing the following, booking, at least let's talk about the return. I like to book lie flat return flights from Hawaii because they tend to be overnight. You want to, you want to be able to lie flat and sleep. So, you know, what I'd love to do is, is um, because there's never a word availability in first class is just book an economy flight coming back on an airline that would, I could easily change or cancel that flight for free Southwest when, when the time comes Southwest Delta, one, but almost all of them now, American, right? <laughs> basically <laughs> yeah. all of them. I could, now, right? I could <laughs> just pick whoever has the best pricing pretty much. Yeah. Um, and be prepared to fly that if the United, uh, you know, award space doesn't show up on the morning that, that I'm going to be checking out. And, yeah. but if the word space does show up, you know, book it and, uh, uh, and then, you know, cancel the other one. So yeah. no, that's, that's, I think that's a really interesting way to go about it. I'm, I I'm intrigued by that also because I happen to have a bunch of Turkish miles in my account from canceled stuff. So if I could, the magically, <laughs> I mean, if the button ever comes back or, or if, uh, you know, a phone agent is magically able to see same day availability, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's, it's intriguing to me anyway. I like that strategy. So, all right. So that may 
be a time when Aeroplan comes in handy for Chase Ultimate Rewards customers for last minute travel. I mean, you found that on the Hawaii route there, but probably that same type of logic applies on other routes as well. I would assume. I, I don't know what the yeah, and you know, we're assuming are. we're assuming that transfers to Air Canada are instant. They are they are with. Uh, it, Transfers to Air Canada are instant from Amex, so I'm sure it's I, true. I meant, I meant to bring well. that up, actually, and I was going to say check the show notes because surely when this this show ends, when we finish recording it, one of us is going to make a transfer to Aeroplan just to check and make sure that it's instant, and I'll put in the show notes whether or <laughs> yeah. not it was. I'm sure it probably is. So so we'll know anyway by the time you you listen to this. Just check those those notes. If you're on YouTube, you got to go to the video description. If you're you know on a podcast platform, it's in there somewhere if you go into the notes. Okay, so I mean, that's I think that's interesting as well. And then, you know, when I talk about these complex itineraries, you have to remember that, I mean, I mentioned how big the Asia and, and Australia, the Pacific region is, but most of the regions are really big. So the same thing is true with the Atlantic region. Pricing to Europe is now more expensive. And so, you know, you looked at some routes to Europe where, generally speaking, United is going to have a cheaper price if what you're doing is looking to just fly from the US to one city in Europe and back then yeah United is going to be a better option for that uh, but because that Atlantic region includes Africa and India then you know if you're willing to pay the the higher distance rates at the higher end of the award chart again you can put together an itinerary that includes two totally different regions, kind of. And when I say different regions, I mean what we think of typically as regions, because, you know, most of us would not consider India and South Africa and, you know, Germany in the same region, but Aeroplan does. So, so you know, if you're willing to, or if you're interested in, I should say, putting together some of those multi-stop itineraries, it's not just the Asia Pacific region where that's interesting. Though, as I say that, I guess you would have to check in and see, what the United pricing would be to book those flights separately, because I don't know in all cases that Aeroplan will still come out cheaper. Yeah, because because the the uh, direct uh, awards to Africa on United were a lot cheaper. This is business class I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah. Than with uh, Aeroplan, so you know it, it is possible that booking them separately with United might might be cheaper or might be. Uh, very close anyway. Right. And, and don't forget the extra 5,000 miles to, to book a stopover with Air Canada. Of course, so yeah. That could definitely make them comparable, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, and, and that'll probably somewhat depend on which things you're trying to combine. All right, here's another reason why Aeroplan is a great addition for Chase Ultimate Rewards. Anybody who's got very young kids, I'm talking about lap infants under two years old, Aeroplan is a fantastic addition for you because Aeroplan charges now just 2,500 miles one way for a lap infant. Now compare that to United. United is going to charge you 10% of the revenue fare of however much the revenue fare costs, which if you're booking, for example, a one way international business class award, 10% of the revenue fare can be a lot of money. And instead, Aeroplan will charge you just 2,500 miles. And that's that to me is fantastic. Uh, you know, I have still have a son who will be a lap infant for another year. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to take advantage of that. But, you know, if, if that's your bag, then Aeroplan is a great addition to Ultimate Rewards. Because I don't think yeah. Ultimate Rewards had any partners that had good lap infant policies on international itineraries. I think all of their partners. Um, Virgin Atlantic? Virgin Atlantic. I'm sorry. You're right. Virgin Atlantic, which does have excellent. Uh, international award chart spots for infant awards also. So lap, lap infants do fly cheaply with Virgin Atlantic in terms of using miles and, and British Airways charges 10% of the adult mileage fare. So, I mean, that may come in handy in, in the right situations. Uh, but, but I think 2,500 aeroplan miles is as good as it's going to get. That's a great deal. Yeah. Um, now one thing in, in conversely about uh, this whole thing is, United doesn't charge award change fees and as long as you as long and cancellation fees as long as you cancel more than 30 days in advance there's no cancellation fees meaning you get back your miles you get back any taxes and fees you paid Air Canada currently for for flights booked now before the end of August 2021 is not ch is not charging any change or cancellation fees but that ends at the end of August, unless they extend it again, which they've done in the past. But the point is Air Canada's policy is temporary. United's is intended to be permanent. 
or announced to be impermanent. So that that's a case where once Air Canada starts charging these things, if if the prices are are close, I'm going to want to go with United, especially if it's uh, one that I'm not sure of. If I'm booking a same day flight like the Hawaii thing, I don't mind uh, getting locked in, obviously, because right. I, I know I'm going to fly. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. I mean, and that's I, you know that's why. I, I would obviously prefer it if Aeroplan didn't have any change fees, but that's why I think overall, this is, even though there are some differences, it's not bad news for sure. And I think it is great news because it gives some variety. It gives you a new option. That's going to save you miles in that situation. So I think Aeroplan is a a pretty situational program. It's, it's going to depend on each individual spot. You know, even though they have a better award price on that route, it may not be worth it if you're booking something far, far in advance where it might change, but it certainly will be worth it. If you're, like you said, booking that last minute flight. So, and you know, I talked about the complex itineraries and not everybody can take the time to fly to Europe and India, uh, you know, by way of, of Africa or whatever it might be, you know, not everybody's got the ability to do that. I understand that. So that's not going to be good news for someone who's not interested in that. But I think having the variety, the ability to do that, if that becomes something that you want to do, I think that's a really big addition for ultimate rewards because they just didn't have anything like this before. Right. Right. Uh, You know, I, I think this is theoretically possible. You know, once once full international travel becomes available to us again, you know, I, I think we've talked about it. you should be able to book a flight like all the way to Australia with a stopover and then onward to, for example, South Africa <laughs> and and just pay one price with the 5,000 mile addition for that stopover, uh, which would be yeah, I mean, drastically cheaper than than United or probably just about any other currency. And that's, doing that. that's a great point, because that's something that I feel like hasn't been touched on very much because Air Canada hasn't made that feature live yet. But but they do. I mean, they have said a number of times already that they intend to unveil a totally new award booking system. And yeah. that is supposed to be one of the features that you can more or less choose the flights you want to choose. And of course, we're a little skeptical. Uh, but if you're listening and you're like, but wait a second, Australia and Africa aren't in the same region. You're right. But the way our Canada made this sound was that you would be able to book the itinerary you want to book. So if you want to book a flight to South Africa and pay the price to fly to the Atlantic region, but you want to do it really far at the farthest end of their distance band, it's okay if you connect in another region. So you could fly to Australia in order to get there, like Greg is saying. So again, amazing if and when that comes together for people who have the flexibility to do that. Again, not everybody, but not every transfer partner program has to be perfect for every person. I think it's great news to have that because I mean, there was, again, there was nothing like this in the ultimate rewards ecosystem. My, my gripe with ultimate rewards for a long time has been that very few of their partners turn out to be the best in any particular situation. And, and, you know, it just didn't seem like they had many of those types of strengths and, and none of them really had much that was interesting to offer, but Aeroplan really does. Right, right. So I, I'm just going to take exception to the to the okay d- your decision right. that it's great news. All right, I'm putting it somewhere in between good and great. Okay, all right. <laughs> I would I would be okay with great if it was like usually going to work out cheaper, but if it's like under these very unusual circumstances, <laughs> it's going to be cheaper. I just can't quite get to great on that one. You see, I like to me, that's better news than if every single award were 10,000 miles cheaper than what United charges. That wouldn't excite me as much because even if they're 10,000 miles cheaper than what United charges, they're not necessarily going to be the best deal if you collect multiple currencies anyway. And so that's, and and you yourself just said a few minutes ago that, you know, the 10,000 miles basically didn't make a big difference to you in the overall scheme of things. And I argued that it should, but, but I'll argue here now that if that's your perspective, then even if they were the cheapest in every single situation, that wouldn't necessarily be great news to me. Great news to me is having the ability to eke out fantastic value from these weird sweet spots. I mean, that's the, the space where we thrive, right? I mean, we enjoy finding oh, yeah. those crazy sweet spots. So to it's, me, I, that's yeah, what I want. Great news for us because well, we get yeah. to write about these well. crazy sweet spots. <laughs> but <laughs> most most Chase customers aren't going to be doing those. Things. Well, okay, that's that that is. I'm sure true. Uh, 
so I, I guess, yes, if, if you're looking at it from that perspective, <laughs> it's not great news. I think the ability to have that stuff, if and when it comes together, is worth more than these awards being a couple thousand miles less because you can already book yeah. them probably for a couple thousand miles less. Just get yourself some membership rewards points if that's what you want. If you want, would you, I mean, right. like you're looking at Europe and you're saying, oh, United is better because they charge what, 60,000 miles one way or whatever. I mean, get, I don't remember get the your, details. Get yourself some, some Amex points and, and book those flights to Europe for 40 or 50,000 miles one way. So. Yeah. But Amex points are so hard to get. It's so hard to get. There's just so <laughs> many cards. It's hard to decide which one, right? Because there's just too right, many cards. Right. They're hard. Very difficult. Oh my gosh. All right. That was obviously a, a joke, joke about it being right. hard to get. They're so easy to get these <laughs> so days. Easy to get. All right. uh, in fact, I, I just, I just published a post about, about my wife uh, signing up for a few Amex cards and, and a couple other cards and, and just on the Amex side alone, she's looking at many hundreds of thousands of points, uh, maybe close to half a million if she gets approved for the, uh, the Schwab platinum and, and Same. maxes that out. But yeah, um, <laughs> It's yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been raining Amex points for quite a while, but anyway. All right, so we're somewhere I between think, good and and great. We're yeah, like I, positive. I, well, notes. between positive. we're between very good and great, which I, you know I think our audience has got to be tired of of that Argument. debate. Right. So <laughs> it's just very good news. Great news. It's, Who cares? It's something it's good. positive. It's positive. <laughs> you agree? It's positive news. I think it's yes. a good addition. So all right. So thank you very much, Chase, for adding Aeroplan. Finally. Are you excited about the credit card, Greg? Because, I mean, you wrote about the credit card this week and you said, hey, you can pre-register now for an extra 10,000 miles when it comes out. I know we don't have the details yet. Do you think that it's likely that it's going to be something you're going to be at all interested in? Uh, well, so, so no, I don't think it's likely. But, but that's not to say it won't be exciting for some because I think it's likely that there will be a premium card that has you know, uh, shortcuts to elite status. And so if, if elite status matters to you, which I, I, I just don't know why, you know, it, it would have to be someone who flies Air Canada a lot, not just Star Alliance, but Air Canada a lot for, for uh, it, for elite status to matter that much to you, I think. But anyway, if that matters to you, then I think uh, we could have an exciting offering coming. Yeah, I, I, I'm not excited. <laughs> I mean, I, I, yes, you're right. That may be the case. The premium card may offer some interesting benefits or something. Uh, but yeah, I mean, with especially with Amex points, so easy to come by right now. I can't right. imagine how many points Chase would have to offer on the Aeroplan card to make that a blip on the radar these days, you know, right, to, right. To, be, to be worth giving up a 524 slot rather than having just opened up the Sapphire preferred for a hundred thousand. Uh, because I mean, are they going to give more than a hundred thousand aeroplan miles or you get 110 because you registered ahead of time? Is that going to move the needle? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel very skeptical that I'm going to be excited about it, but you know, Chase, if you're listening, change my mind. What, what's your guess of the best uh, welcome offer they'll introduce when the aeroplane cards come out? I, you know, so keep in mind first, yeah. keep in mind that, uh, uh, the recent new United card, uh, whatever that's called the quest or some, um, hundred K came out with a hundred K offer. Right. But the United, I think it's a business card right now has a 150 K offer of course, 20 K spend, but still. So with those two parameters, um, and with all the obvious cards, like British Airways all out hundred K, what do you think? <laughs> I mean, you're leading me to say, it's got to be 100K, <laughs> right? I mean, I, <laughs> but I, I did have that thought. It's got to be 100K. So I guess it's going to be 110 if you register for the extra 10,000 miles now. I, I can't see them going any higher than United. I could have seen them going 75, except that, like you said, all of the Avios cards went 100. So I feel like it's, in Air Canada, I got to say the aeroplan people seem more in touch with what's going on and more uh, interested in having a competitive program. I imagine that they are aware. I, I'm sure that there are some loyalty programs that don't pay that much attention to what everybody else is offering. Aeroplan, I, I expect, is an exception where I bet that they know, they, you know they're clearly aware that the Avios cards have been offering 100,000 and United cards 100, 150. So I can't imagine that they're going to want to go less than that. So I think right. 100 is likely it. And, and on the premium card, I don't think they're going to go 150. I, I, maybe they will. I'm thinking maybe 125. Or maybe just yeah. better benefits and even a, a lesser sign-up bonus. I don't know. 
Right, right. I'm going to go out on a limb and say 150k with 20k spend. Uh, okay. You know, and then and then Good. you have the possibility of getting 10k more. I don't think it's super likely, but I feel like I need to there throw out a guess. There. Throw out a guess. All right, <laughs> let's see. We'll see. We'll find out. Probably in November. It sounds like so. Not that's that right. Far that's off. right. Okay. Well, then that brings us, my friends, to the post roast. And I gave Greg a lot of material this week for his post. Yeah, so Nick's been on vacation, so I don't have anything. Okay, well, that's fine. I'll make up for it. So, All right. All right. So let's see. Where to begin for this week's post roast? This is a (laughs) So good good week. So many, so many. I mean, I already got a little mini marshmallow roast in there before, but uh, Mm, but so marshmallows. Yeah, yeah. there you go. So here's one for you. You wrote this post, like you said, about player two, about your wife earning some half a million points from recent applications as player player two in the household. And that's great. That's exciting. But when I read through it, I was like, okay, so she got a hundred thousand points. Where is the $200 for converting her bank of America cash rewards to an unlimited rewards? I mean, did, did you not get that option? Is there no, I mean, cause if you haven't been paying attention, bank of America has been offering a lot of cash rewards, customers, a $200 bonus to product change, not even open a new account to product change to the new cash unlimited card or the unlimited cash card or whatever it's called. Did you not add that in there, Greg? She didn't get that, or at least oh, uh, if she did, bummer. I haven't found it. <laughs> yeah. Bummer. It seems like an easy $200. You don't even have to apply yeah. for a new account. It's like, you know, no, right, right. no five. Yeah, no, that, I mean, that would be really nice. <laughs> All right. So there's no roast then if you no roast in that anyway, if you didn't get that. Okay. So then let's Phew. move on. All right. No, 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 so no, no, no. We're not uh, done. Finish up We're the not show. Done. We're not done. <laughs> <laughs> so in your player two post, this isn't so much a roast. Maybe this is a suggestion or maybe this is a, a topic that we need to cover. So when I read your player two post, I thought of a conversation that I had on Twitter recently with another blogger who was saying that she needed to find a way to use the points from an Amex gold welcome bonus before closing the card. And, and so several of us were like, well, just get a blue business plus or an Amex every day. You don't need to spend those points right, right. away. And, and she was like, well, no player two is really, you know, reluctant and doesn't want to you know, open any other cards. So we got to find a way to use these points and use them now. And, and so I understand that a lot of people have a reluctant player too. Greg and I are in the, 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 the fortunate circumstance, I think of each having a player two that is not reluctant. Uh, you know, perhaps your player two is less interested in manufactured spending than mine, but not certainly putting right. up a so, fight so, over a new car. Right. So right? my player, my player two is happy to, uh, sign up for cards. It just doesn't want to actually do anything that involves going into stores, buying gift cards or, you know, buying money orders or, or even calling banks. So I, I try to avoid situations <laughs> where I, you know, I can't, uh, secure message or, or do other ways of, of making changes <laughs> for her accounts. Right. Right. And, and, you know, I, and, and I, I, loathe the days where I have to write notes so that my player two can make one of those calls and be like, okay, these are the things you need to <laughs> right, know. Right. Uh, so, so I totally can sympathize with a player two that's even less interested. Cause I mean, we're pretty fortunate in that regard, I feel like, and some people have a player two that's just totally disinterested in this. So I get that. But what I was thinking as I read it was, you know, there ought to be a post or maybe a section of the player two post that's like, okay, basic player two strategy these are the fights you want to have in the beginning, right? If you're, if we're going to play the game, we got to play it with some strategy, right? Like, you know, if you're, yeah. if you're going to open these cards and get these points, then we have to have a strategy for how we're going to keep those points alive and how we're going to use them. So this isn't necessarily a roast of your post, but as I read through it, I was like, you know, it would be good in a player two post to tell people, okay, so this is what player two is doing. And this is how I'm making sure that this is going to work out long-term without player two having to, you know, like, add any more difficulty because you're going to pick right. up all those membership rewards points and, and you're going to eventually probably cancel a bunch of those cards and, and you're not going to have to worry about it because you already had the fight early on where you were, I should say fight. I'm sure it wasn't a fight in your household, but, but to say, Hey, listen, you need to have a blue business plus or an every day right. because we want to be able to hang on to those points long-term. Right. 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 So, so, and Nick's pointing out those two cards because they're both fee free and just by having one of them, it keeps your points alive, no matter what you do with your other Amex cards. So yes, she already has a Blue Business Plus, and so there's no fear there. I'm already a authorized user on, might be the Blue Business Plus, at least, at least some of her cards. So that gives me the power to transfer 
her points, not to my membership rewards points, but to any of my loyalty programs. So if I want to add points to my ANA account or to, uh, you know, Air Canada, <laughs> I can do that uh, from her, uh, from her program, from her point stash. And that's a key piece of strategy that I feel like probably needs to get highlighted. And I don't know necessarily if it was missing from that post, but as I read it mm-hmm. and I thought about that, I was like, you know what? Those are things that not everybody knows to do with their player two, because I mean, that yeah. makes those points more valuable because now you can transfer them to player one's loyalty accounts in that case with the MX points. Cause it's not intuitive with Amex the way it is with chase to be able to combine points in a household or like the Wyndham points, they expire after a certain number of years. So, you know, what are you going to do to make sure that that doesn't happen? And obviously you found some, some, the things on that recently, and maybe you have some plans for how you're going to use the points. But if you're going to play with player two, you got to have some long-term strategy, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think that's a great idea for future posts, maybe, maybe sort of a summary of, of how to deal with these different programs, you know, player two kind of environment situation uh, so that you can right. keep the points. Cause, it, cause it's great. It's great and, to get the 500,000 points, but yeah, but you gotta be able to, to, you don't want to end up in a hurry to use them or something or, or without a plan as to how you're going to use them. Cause I often run into that too, right. with people ask questions in frequent miler insiders. They're like, Hey, I opened this card and now I don't know what to do with the points. And so, you know, you want to, if you're going to help player two sign up for cards, you want to have a plan for what you're going to do with those points or how you're going to keep them alive. One or the other. Great point. Okay. Great point. All right. So that's it. That's uh, that's where I'm going to finish my post roast. I really kind of want to, well, I kind of want to roast your Hyatt post too, but I feel like that's a conversation <laughs> for another day because I'm Alrighty. more concerned about those destination residences than Greg is. So that's another okay. conversation for another day. All right. So then that brings us to the question of the week. And this week's question is a fantastic question, I think. Uh, so I'm excited to bring it up here. I have it on. My- I'd say it's it's a very good question. No, but not no. Fantastic. It's, it's, it, it, <laughs> <laughs> we'll argue that afterwards. So Stephen and our frequent miler insiders asked a question and it's kind of long, but uh, but I think maybe it's worth reading it. So Stephen says, anyone else having trouble getting the IRS to refund money they overpaid meeting the minimum spend on a signup bonus. Steven says, I filed in January and haven't received the balance back yet. And for those, you know, not looking at the calendar, we're now in August. So it's been a long time. He says the IRS yeah. doesn't view this as a refund. So any automated system about where's my refund doesn't work, but I can see online on my tax transcript that they received my payment and consider I have a credit. However, I can't get a hold of a human being to discuss getting the credit dispersed. I have called all the IRS and tax advocacy numbers, and they all literally lead to an automated voice saying they're too busy to answer questions at this time, blah, 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 hang up on him. It's going on two months of intermittent calling. He filed a paper request for tax advocacy uh, a month ago and received no response. Anything else one can do? I guess you can consider this a warning about overpaying taxes when the IRS is so underfunded that there's no one to help get your money back. I don't know. Uh, At any rate, do you know of other people that have had this issue? Because we've written, you've written many mm-hmm. times about paying taxes via the IRS. And if you end up paying too much, you get a refund, blah, blah, blah. Do you know about this yeah. situation and what can Stephen do? Yeah, just, just a little bit. So this happened to me last year, uh, you know, something about the pandemic and how they're under-resourced and overworked. Um, yeah, my, my refund took forever to come back last year. And it doesn't surprise me at all to hear that it's happening again. Unfortunately, I don't know of any solution to speed it up. It's really unfortunate that uh, it's become so difficult to, you know, both get a hold of them and and that their their processes are so slow. So yeah, unfortunately, it's just didn't work out the, during pandemic time. Eek. Yeah. So I, I mean that yeah. that's that's definitely something to keep in mind because. You know, if if you do it just a little bit, uh, maybe that's not such a big deal. If you can afford to float however much you've overpaid, but uh, you kind of need to be careful because I think some people have overpaid by, you know, hefty amounts before. And so, you know, you don't want to be out that money and waiting eight or nine months. So it's definitely something to to keep in mind. But but it's worth mentioning that you've probably not had this be a problem a number of times also, right? I mean, you've, you've had this. Right. I mean, fine. pre-pandemic, the, the uh, refund would come back usually pretty quickly, certainly within a month or so of filing. So it, it's surprising that it's taking so long and 
I, <laughs> again, unfortunately, I have no idea what to do about it because if it's if it's impossible to get a hold of a person, I don't know how you could get help. So, but you did go through this last year and you did eventually get the money back, right? Yeah. I mean, luckily for me, it wasn't, uh, you know, so much that I couldn't live without it. Um, and yeah, it probably took, I'm kind of guessing here cause I don't remember the dates, but, but maybe about, um, four or five months after filing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and in this case, Steven's now looking at seven. So yeah. Ouch, ouch. Careful out yeah. there you yeah. know, with that as we go into the next year here that, you know, if you're going to do that as a means of meeting a welcome bonus, I mean, it can be a legit way and an easy way to meet a welcome bonus. But keep in mind that you know, if something gets held up, it could be a long time. I would certainly uh, go easy on that over this next year or two. That's a, a good warning from Stephen anyway, as to, to what could happen. So, all right. Careful out there, everybody. If you've enjoyed what you've been listening to and you would like to get on our email list so you can read about this stuff every day or every week, we've got lots of different options. You can go to frequentmiler.com slash subscribe to get on our email list and find all the ways to follow us on social media. You can join our Frequent Miler Insiders Facebook group so you can connect with other readers and listeners and get your questions answered and, uh, and help other folks too. So thank you very much for being out there with us and we will see you guys again next week. Bye, everybody.